Hello everybody, it's Dr. Galvin with another update. Uh, as we've been doing since the beginning of this COVID uh, situation, I've been doing updates both about this and also doing some videos about wellness. My name is Jeffrey Galvin. I'm a physician, board certified in emergency medicine. And I also practice functional me medicine besides working in the emergency department. Um, we try to provide some, you know, good science-based information. I try not to bring any politics into it. We just look at the science and what it says and what it means to protect ourselves and other people from catching this virus. Um, as usual, if you find this helpful, please like us on Facebook, follow us on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, hit the little bell. Vitality Medical Wellness Institute is essentially me. So, we talked about early in the, I think it was Sunday or Monday, I posted a video about how not to get COVID. Well, today's video is how to get COVID, but not get sick. So what, what does that mean? Well, we know that about 40% of people that get infected with COVID have no symptoms. So if you have a choice between coming down with COVID and ending up in the ICU on a ventilator or having no symptoms, which do you want? Of course, we want to be the, the part that has no symptoms. So how do we get there? And why do we need to worry about it? Well, because, you know, right now there's over 8 million cases in the U.S., 40 million cases worldwide. So no matter what we do, there is a reasonable chance that either yourself or somebody you love is going to come down with this virus. As you guys know, if you've been watching this, my daughter, who's a senior at Appalachian State, her and her three housemates all had it and they came through it fine. They're doing well, but they got sick. And so I have a family member that got, got sick and I certainly am glad that she was in the mild case. Now we know that there are risk factors. Um, there are some comorbidities, diabetes, in, you know, immune dysfunction, obesity, age. But that being said, we, you know, I personally have taken care of, of, of some big nursing home outbreaks with lots of mortality locally but there have been you know, people in their 80s and 90s in those nursing homes that were positive that were completely asymptomatic. So there's gotta be some benefit there to, to you know, some way of, of if we're gonna get sick, which we are you know, likely to get exposed, how do we make sure we don't get really sick? And it turns out that the inoculum of virus has a big role, and that means how much you get exposed to. So it turns, you know, it turns out that you get sicker if you get exposed to 10 million virus particles all at once versus 10,000. So if you get 10, exposed to a small amount, your chance of getting really, really sick is much lower than if you get exposed to a big amount. Big amount. And you know, how do we, you know, what plays a big role? Well, masks. You know, masks actually can play a huge role. And we've talked, you know, kind of consistently about wearing masks to protect others. Well, I'm telling you now, that I think that the evidence is very, very clear that masks will protect you as well. And this is what, it, what I'm talking about. N95 masks that we wear in the hospital filter out about 90, 95% of virus particles. Now we typically wear an N95 with a cloth mask over it. The cloth mask or surgical masks, depending on how they're used, filter out about 65 to 85% of virus particles. Not as effective, but still, 65, 85% is still a lot. And we know that there's a link between the amount of virus you're exposed to and the severity of illness. And this goes all the way back to studies that were done in the, in the 30s where they actually were able to show that there was an LD50 for virus exposure. And LD50 is, is a dosage of typically a, a medicine or a toxin or a poison that kills 50% of the subjects, in this case, animals that were used. Well, they were able to show that the same relationship played out with, vi with deadly viruses and that the amount of virus as it went up, the number of, of, of sicknesses and deaths went up. So there was an LD50 of viruses. And, um, there's more and more evidence that are, are building up that if you can keep the amount of virus you get exposed to down, your chance of becoming markedly symptomatic is reduced. And there's virological, epidemiologic, and some ecologic um, data. And I'm gonna post at the bottom of the YouTube video all the links to all these studies. So if you really wanna geek out and, and really dig into what I'm talking about and look at the studies, there'll be links below. So the virologic evidence is these studies in the 30s. Now there's a cool study that they did where they put masks on hamsters. Now, how did they do that? How did they train those hamsters to get those little masks on their faces? Well, they, they didn't really do that. What they did was they took mask material and basically put it up in their cages and blew virus through it. So some hamsters got exposed to the virus directly and some, some hamsters got exposed 
through this mask material. And it turns out the ones that got exposed to the virus through the mask, essentially, did you know either get, were asymptomatic or they had minimal symptoms, whereas the hamsters that got exposed to the full dose got much sicker. So there's another piece of virologic evidence. And there's, there's lots of other studies that show this relationship between dose and illness. Epidemiologically, um, we know that there's some really interesting things that we found. Um, those cruise ship outbreaks that, that we had very early on in the virus, what we found generally was that those cruise ships essentially affected everybody. There was a very, very high infection rate because of close proximity and they're sort of stuck on a ship, you know, and subsequently they had high levels of infectivity on board, but still about 40% of those people on those cruise ship got sick but were asymptomatic, meaning that they converted, they were, you know, they developed an immune response, but they were not symptomatic, 40%. Well, there was a, I want to say a Norwegian cruise ship that had a outbreak and they immediately universally masked everybody on the ship. Now, guess what? Still, most of the people on the, on the ship got sick, got, you know, were positive for COVID, but as opposed to 40% on the cruise ships that they weren't masking, the group, the, the cruise ship where they put everybody in a mask, 81% of those patients were asymptomatic. So it markedly reduced the number of people that got actually got sick with it. And that's important. Um, the other, some other piece of evidence, if you, I remember we talked about before the Missouri hair salon, where we two had, had two hairdressers that were symptomatic. Um, and were shedding virus, but they were wearing masks and all of their clients wore a mask. And about 139 people got exposed to these two women in the course of about a week or so. And there wasn't a single person that got sick because the masks protected the people from getting exposed and also probably protected them from breathing in whatever virus did make it through the, the mask. There's been some other very interesting similar studies. You know, we had outbreaks in food processing plants, we've had outbreaks in jails, but Interestingly, as soon as they started implementing either universal distancing like they're doing in jails or universal masking like they're doing in food processing plants, we were still having outbreaks, but there's a couple studies that show in food processing plants, 95% of the positives are asymptomatic, the same thing in jails, and it's because of masks. Um, healthcare workers, um, when, since we implemented universal masking in March, the amount of healthcare workers coming down with symptomatic COVID has markedly dropped off. Although seroprevalence, meaning if we check people for antibodies, is still relatively high. So they're still getting exposed, but they're not getting sick. And that's an important thing. Um, ecologic evidence, it, you know, there was a lot of mortality early on. Italy, New York, California. There was a lot of you know, those big outbreaks. There was lots and lots of mortality. Now we've subsequently had you know big outbreaks as well but the mortality rates keep going down and we really think that and it's especially um uh obvious when you look at the places that have implemented universal masking those cities that have inter universal masking it turns out that their mortality rates are lower than those cities that don't have it um, again the masks are probably preventing people from getting exposed to large amounts of virus and subsequently getting sick the other epidemic or rather ecologic evidence we have is those countries that masking was sort of part of their culture anyway, Vietnam, um, uh, uh, Japan, a lot of the Asian countries where, you know, they were wearing masks beforehand. They've had very, very low mortality rates from the virus and probably has to do with masking. Um, there's an interesting uh, epidemiologic model out there that shows that if we had 50% masking and we could lift uh, and you lifted all the restrictions, um, the, the death rate would still stay very, very low as long as people were wearing masks. And so, you know, if you want to catch COVID or, or, you, or you have to catch COVID, you really want to be using a mask so you don't get really, really sick. And so, you know, I've posted a lot of data sources below. You guys can argue with me about masks all you want. The fact of the matter is, is they work. You know, it's not, I've talked about this before, the virus doesn't care about politics. The virus doesn't care about your individual rights. The virus wants to be a virus. It wants to propagate and infect as many people as it can. And if you want to be smarter than the virus, do the basic things. Social distance, wash your hands, wear your freaking mask, and we'll get through this. 
That's it for today. I'll be back later on in the week. Um, I hope everybody stays safe. As usual, wash your hands. Look after yourselves. Look after your families. Look after those around you. And wear your mask. Talk to you soon.